Hello folks, we've had some questions about our uniform and today we're going to show you step by step how we put it on and all the individual parts of it. As you can see, Private McMorris here is wearing his undershirt with dark green trousers and boots. So first we start with the putties. The putties are probably the most asked about and the most contentious part of the uniform. If they're not done correctly, they can look sloppy and they could let in water and mud into your boots. The main point of the putties is to protect your boots and the bottom of your trousers from any harsh conditions. As you can see, Private McMorris starts to wrap the putties from the boot around the laces, slowly moving up the leg. You might have noticed the seam on these putties. Uh, these putties are two individual putties sewn together as we are unable to get any intact World War I and World War II putties, but these do the job very well. As you can see, as he's the, the top of the putties, he wraps around the cord and fastens it to keep a tight seal at the top. then on to the other leg. He pins back his trouser leg so as to create as tight a seal as possible to avoid the putties from coming loose around the ankle, which can result in the unraveling of the entire length of the putty. And once again, fastening at the top. Now it's important when you take off your putties to roll them up in the way you saw at the start, so that it's easier to put them back on. And just like that, the putties are fashioned and we're ready to go into harsh conditions. Then we move on to the jacket. Uh, the jacket is reasonably heavy to ensure warmth on the inside, and you put on as any other jacket and then fasten the buttons from the bottom. Remember to fasten the pocket buttons, just so nothing falls out in the field. Then moving on to the gas mask bag, which hangs around your neck over the front of your tunic. And then fastens around the back like so, to keep it in place. Next up we have the webbing. Everything is already attached to the webbing, for in cases of emergency where you need to prepare quickly to mobilise, you don't need to struggle with the rest of your equipment, such as water canteens, kit bags, bayonets, what have you, it can all be thrown on quickly with the rest of the webbing. The webbing is fastened under the shoulder tags and then fastened at the front like a belt. And last but definitely not least, one of the more visually appealing parts of the uniform, the different headgear. First, we have the Glengarry, uh, common in Irish and Scottish regiments. It has to be tilted on the right hand side of the head, just to the right of your nose line. Next up, we have the trench cap, just a soft cap that can be easily stowed in a bag. And that just goes on like so. Finally, a part of the uniform that our viewers seem to love, the Brody helmet. Standard issue in World War I and World War II throughout British and Commonwealth countries. Similarly, our expeditionary uniform, which is kilted, uh, is done in a very similar fashion with the putties going first. This uniform has a unique feature for the putties, which is fastened just at the top to add a bit of flair. The kilt is then adorned with a sporran, a bag that hangs around the waist, following the rest of the equipment put on as before. We have a similar Glengarry hat placed on the right hand side of the head again. 
Then we have the pith helmet. Just fastened on top. And finally, the Brody helmet. This one, a slightly different colour to the previous one, fits in better with the expeditionary uniform. And with that, the expeditionary uniform is complete. Thank you for watching. If you're a reenactor, I hope this helps, and we'll see you in the next video.